Yes, lads, welcome back to episode six of the Borussia Dortmund career mode series. We've got eight more ginormous games, not even a real word, in today's episode. And we'll start off with one against Bayer Leverkusen and a quick look at the league table. We'll start, so 20 games played, 17 wins, three draws, 54 points. It's not bad really, is it? Let's be really honest. So uh, before we kick off in the game, we have changed to competitive mode, which is a lot harder. As you'll see from this game, it's a massive wake-up call um, to the actual save. We are unbeaten going into this first episode. Sorry, the first game of this episode. And um, I'll give you a quick hint. It's very difficult on competitive mode. It really, really is. But yeah, hopefully um, we can still retain our unbeaten streak so far. 20 games into the season and we're still yet to taste defeat in any competition, never mind just the league. And hopefully we can uh, maintain our strong form and cement our place as Bundesliga leaders. So we'll start the first game, which we've got at the Signal Iduna Park against Bayern Leverkusen. So a very difficult game. We've got the black and yellow wall in the background. Always a hard team to play. We beat them in the reverse fixture at their home ground, but obviously it's always difficult on competitive mode. So let's see our team before we stick, kick off. Kobar starts on goal. We've got the back five of Munia, Schlotterback, Dahoud, but he's playing as a CDM, Akanji and Nets. Midfield two of Sal uh, Savic and Bellingham and the forward line of Pulisic, Adiemi and Sebastian Alares. Royce is too tired to start. So we'll start the first out of the game in the eighth minute. Leverkusen get the first chance. Schick plays it through towards Brozovic. He's got a chance to beat the keeper. Ball rolls it back towards Hozek and Adam Hozek, the Czech under 2020 international and actually first team international, makes it 1-0. Great goal. Brozovic with the assist as well. And we're under the cosh already. But in the 15th minute, we get a chance ourselves. Schlotterbach plays in towards Bellingham. He's looking for the inside run of Ali. He's got a chance to get past that. So we slides it underneath the goalkeeper. And we're 1-1. It's poor goalkeeping by the Leverkusen number one. It's not um, Kharadetsky. I don't know why. I don't know where he's gone. It's a different keeper for some reason. But yeah, brilliant goal. Nonetheless, by Sebastian Ali. Another assist for Bellingham as well. who started this season on fire. And that's a brilliant way. To get on the score sheet for Sebastian Allaire. But just before half-time, Leverkusen will get another goal. Arango is in Lozek playing a quick one too. In towards Moose Jab. He's got a chance to beat Kobal from inside the eight-yard range. And it's actually 2-1 now just before kickoff. The former Everton wide man for us anyway on the career mode. Moose Diaby makes it 2-1. Trademark run. And that is what the first half finishes as. Very difficult. And hopefully we can recover in the second half. It's been very, very difficult if I am being honest. So in the second half, speaking of that, we will we'll pick up in the 48th minute. Adley's got the ball. Schick plays it inside towards Diaby, who turns his man. Chance for him. It's a great save by Gregor Kobal, who keeps the score. Still within touching distance. But they do get the corner. The Chilean international, Aranguiz, is looking for a man. Looks for the back stick. Finds Divray, the former Inter Milan central defender. Former Lazio as well. It's a brilliant goal by Stefan Divray. What a header that is. He re he, look how he, he leaps like a salmon. He reaches it fantastically well. And we're not even done there. 76 minutes now. 50 minutes before the end of the game. Aranguiz and Adley play a quick one too. Down the line. He's looking to play it in the middle. Quick bit of skill. Gets past to Kanji. In towards Verts. Who dinks it over. Gregor Kobal. Um, Florian Vert Seals the game. Seals the victory. I mean he can't tell what it's saying. But it's still 4-1. Brilliant goal, and we lose the game. What a woeful game of football by us. Our first defeat of the season. We haven't gone unbeaten at home either, so we failed our first challenge of the season. And we've been reduced to a £50 million transfer budget if we do the season two. So, yeah, it's quite upsetting, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not too happy. Very disappointed in the outcome of that game. But, you know, it is what it is. This sort of stuff happens in career mode. They, they absolutely battered us, to be honest. First game of competitive mode. Hopefully not the last, but I mean, you'll, you'll see it's not the last this episode, but it's still so difficult, especially when you lose against teams like this who are our rivals for the top three, top four sort of positions. I mean, even top of the table positions. They're always up there, are Bayern Leverkusen. And Hlozek takes on the match ball as one of the match, and it's deserved. It really, really is. It's just a difficult game. And after that, we'll move on into a simulated game. But before we get into anything, I believe we've got a, um, a scouting report to get to. Oh, yeah, our three monthly scouting reports before we play Union Berlin have come up. So we've got a few to go through right here. Decent players. That Alfonso Gomez, by the way. 62 to 82 rated. That means he's at least like 67 rated. 
And I was just going to go back and get rid of some players, but I can't because if I do that, I don't have a chance to sign him because this is the final scouting report of this uh, block of three which we've got going. It's like driving lessons, isn't it? The block of three. But still, yeah, uh, he's going to be a good signing, he will. Hopefully we'll get some game time in the second season. I'm thinking I'll do a season two, guys. It depends what the views and response are like, really. Obviously, the Real Madrid career mode did far better than this one. And I was expecting it to, in all fairness. It's just what happens when you do Real Madrid as a team. But still, let me go, let you go. Oh, God. Let, let me know, you guys, in the comments below if you uh, want a season two or if you want to move on to different teams. Like, I've got Arsenal. We could do, we could do Nottingham Forest. We could do... Uh, Manchester United and we've got the option to do the FIFA 23 mod series which a lot of people are doing like a lot of YouTubers actual YouTubers who earn money from it so I'm thinking thinking we could do that with a different team because I really like the idea of a modded series as well because I've got a, a pretty good PC if I'm being honest it's, it's not too bad but yeah we've got a, a few changes to the lineup for this game against Union Berlin obviously a European team the last couple of seasons they have been obviously Europa Conference League last season. So hopefully we get the dub. We'll simulate this game and we get a 2-2 draw. Oh dear. Adiemi gets two goals. But Prama opens a score and Royce misses the penalty just before half time. Two shots, two chances. Are you taking the Michael? And we had eight shots, five chances. But Behrens obviously got the equaliser for them as Adiemi walks over. The man of the match, an 8.9 rating. Just a difficult game of football by the looks of it. It's just one of them games, guys. It happens sometimes. We're dropping points, but... We've still got a healthy lead over the competition. We've got another simulation game to come ahead as well. It's obviously a difficult game in Borussia Mönchengladbach. We beat them like 7-0 the last time we played them, or 6-0. So I thought, you know what? I cannot be bothered to play them in the nicest way possible. Uh, someone's commented on the last video that you guys don't want to see games against Bochum and stuff like that. So usually what I do is I play them once, and if I batter them, I don't play them again. I'll play Schalke because that's the... Uh, Riverside Derby, the, the translation is anyway, and um, yeah, I just think that makes sense. So uh, yeah, we will simulate this game. We had no proper press conference questions last episode, so if you have any actual questions that you want me to answer about the series, I'd be I'd be happy to. It'd take about two minutes out of the video to do so, but this one's already long enough as it is, 25 minutes, and I couldn't really fit it in in terms of time constraints. But still, guys, excellent result against Bushy Munch and Flapjack. Uh, Marco Royce opened the scoring and actually got the only goal of the game against his former club in the 74th minute. So brilliant result there. And we'll move on to the round of 16. First leg of the Champions League against Real Madrid. Our previous career mode team were at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. I know all too well. And it's a massive, massive game away from home in Spain. So we'll see Real Madrid's team before we kick off. Courtois starts in the back four of Ricardo Pereira, Rudiger, um, Alaba and Mendy, which is quite a weird defence to be fair, Pereira. Midfield three of Casemiro, Modric and Cruz. Then the forward line of Vinicius Jr., Benzema and Marco Asensio. Very, very good team to be fair. As we see um, a very different um, right side. I'm surprised Carvajal's not playing over Ricardo Pereira. I'm surprised that they've not bought a new right winger over Asensio because we bought in Gnabry in the Real Madrid career mode. But yeah, very strong team yet again. We always also bought an Nkunku for that right side and it was brilliant. And Rhys James. Such a good series that, to be fair. But yeah, we uh, start with our team as well. Cobalt starts in goal as always for us. We've got the back five of Munia, Sula, Hummels, Akanji and Guerrero. Then the midfield two of Bellingham and Milinkovic-Savic. And then Pulisic, Royce and Halle leading the line. So we get the first half of the game inside the first minute. Royce has got the ball. On the far left side. Plays out wide towards Thomas Munier on the opposite flank. Looking inside for a pass now. Bellingham makes the run. Inside towards Sebastian Alley. Who plays the ball on the first time volley on the week four. And Sebastian Alley makes it 1-0 to Borussia Dortmund already. And could we do like a repeat of Drummond when Lewandowski scored? A hat-trick against Real Madrid back in the day. Pretty much like that would be lovely if we could do that. Great goal by Sebastian Alley though. And our Ivorian number nine. Makes it 1-0. So Pippa up in the ninth minute as Vinicius gets the ball out wide. Sula can't quite get the ball off him entirely. Vinicius retains it. Brilliant pass inside towards Cruz. Casemiro with a chance now and Casemiro tucks it away. Brilliant goal by the big Brazilian midfield Dynamo and Madrid are all level at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. So the next half of the game will come inside the next 16 minutes. Guerrero's got the ball out wide against Pereira's international colleague. Brilliant Cross back sink towards Bellingham and Courtois makes a comfortable save at his front stick. 
Not quite the end of the attack yet. We've got another chance to take. Munya steps up to take the throw in, looking for an easy throw towards Pulisic. Chance for Christian on his left foot. Brilliant effort. And it swings off the crossbar. Madrid escape still level in the game. But just before half time, Benzema looking for a quick one too with Vinicius. Lovely pass inside. Vinicius with the chance. Great save by Cruz. And this time, Sula with the crucial block. As now we can escape ourselves. Madrid have uh, got a lot of men forward here. They've sacrificed a lot going forward. Milinkovic Savic plays it outside left towards Royce. He's got a chance to beat Pereira here. A chance to beat Courtois. Brilliant effort by Royce. And it's just wide of the post. As Marco Royce really should have done better there. On the grandest stage of them all as well. Probably should have scored. But still, it doesn't really matter. We're not quite done yet. Three more minutes later. Alice played through. Shrugs off Rudiger. Shrugs off Alaber. Can he beat Courtois inside the 18-yard box? Yes, he can. Sebastian Haller with the second goal of the game. The UCL hero, Sebastian Haller. What a goal that is. I love saying his name like that. With emphasis on the Sebastian. Oof. What a baller. Big bad Haller. What a finish that is. Against a keeper like Courtois. Or puts us 2-1 ahead. And that is indeed the half-time score. Very difficult um, first off. To be, to be fair, I'm not going to lie. But um, hopefully we can improve even further and push on and get the dub. So in the 6-6 minute, Real Madrid get another chance. Felicius Jr. out wide. Finds the ball in towards Benzema. Gets the luckiest ricochet and fires it past Cobal. What the hell happened there? How did he find his way through that defence? I mean, Hummels is fantastic, but really should be doing better there. Very, very unfortunate goal to concede. Then one final highlight comes the way of us. 73rd minute now. Pulisic cutting inside. Trying to get past his man. Creating a lot of ground. Great save by Courtois. Aller with the rebound. Courtois could not get up quick enough. And Sebastian Aller makes it 3-2. He's got his UCL hatch against Real Madrid. And that is a brilliant header. It really is. Sebastian Aller since he's come to this club. He's not, sco he's not stopped scoring. He really hasn't. Honestly, we can't stop scoring. Brilliant header by him. And that's what we need from him. Goals, goals, goals. Brilliant goal anyway by Ale and we win the game at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu 3-2 against our Spanish compatriots Real Madrid and um, yeah it puts in the driving seat for the second leg look at the stats though four shots to 12 2.5 expected goals to 3.6 I'm pretty certain that we were the favorites in that game at the halftime interval obviously being in the lead but I mean we, we, we really over delivered the expectations with that win very very nice to see though but Real Madrid they were nowhere. Like they, they, they had four shots. It was like 2.5 expected goals. We absolutely peppered them. We really did. Brilliant result anyway. And a brilliant performance all around by the boys. Especially that man, Seb Allaire, with a brilliant hat-trick. A brilliant UCL hat-trick as well. As well now hit the press conference. As we see Barcelona and Liverpool have drawn 1-1. In their UCL round of 16 clash. So uh, we'll see what press conference questions they ask us. Something stupid. You must be proud of your team. Obviously, I'm proud of my team. What a stupid question. Yes, obviously. We just beat Real Madrid. Great performance and great result for us. Yeah, we've got one foot in the uh, quarterfinals. Were you surprised to see a uh, team weighing with a hat-trick? No, I wasn't. He scored like four hat-tricks this season. Hal has been absolutely tremendous all season, especially in a massive game like this. It shows he can do it on the smallest stage against Bolcom and the largest stage against Real Madrid in the Champions League. And uh, I'm not even answering that question. Were you nervous towards the end? No. Obviously not. I believe in my players. I believe in the ability of the team and my ability to, to lead that team. It's just a really nice result. So a one-off press conference to make up for the one we didn't do at the start of the episode with your guys' questions. But yeah, very nice result indeed. We've got another simulation game though to come after this. And um, it's against FC Outsborg in the Bundesliga. So just over the halfway point of the episode now, got a couple more games to play after this one. I think we've got another simulation after this one. Then we've got two full gameplay games after that. We see Royce has won the Player of the Month again. That's like every single month this season we've had a player who's won the Player of the Month. We're the Player of the Month kings, aren't we, basically? But yeah, uh, he was on the shortlist, of course, along with Rafael Guerrero. But Royce did indeed win it for the third time this season, I believe, Marco Royce. I mean, it's, it's crazy numbers. Yeah, we'll make a few changes for this game against FC Augsburg. Obviously like a relegation team in real life. We'll play um, De Hood and Sommer as the midfield too. They sort of play well off each other. With like both got natural ability and natural talent. Oskan can get a game as well because he deserves it a lot. And we'll make Marco Royce 
the captain of the team. So assume this game against FC Augsburg, uh, the WWK Arena, and hopefully we can get the dub. So this sim is going through. We win 3 0. Very, very comprehensive performance. Haller gets another two goals, and Doniel Marlin rounds out the game with a goal in the final 10 minutes. So, yeah, final five minutes, to be fair. Brilliant, brilliant result. Haller gets the man of the match with a 10 rating. Of course, he does. He was fantastic again. He's been the player of this episode, the UCL hero himself, Sebastian Allaire. Um, so after that result, we go on to the next simulated game, which we've got to contend with. It's against FSV Mines 01, because we're sort of doing eight games an episode at the moment, which is actually leading quite nicely until the finale of the uh, of the series, which is not not, not the finale, so it's the final episode of season one. I'll not jump the gun and say finale, depending on how we do in terms of viewership and um, and support from you guys if we do a season two or not but yeah we'll make a few changes to this one again because it's not a big game fsv mines are the, the, like the only thing we've got in common with them is that klopp and tuchel have managed both teams and that's a that's about it that really is about it but we'll simulate this game at the muir arena what a weird stadium name that is very good team fsv mines in real life always finished sixth in real life we should beat them though Away from home, 3-1 victory. Sebastian Allaire cannot stop scoring. Bertie opened the score in the third minute, but Sebastian Allaire gets another hat-trick. How good is Sebastian Allaire? Honestly, please don't recommend new strikers for the transfer window, because that'd be unrealistic. He scored like 35 goals this season, and we're in bleeding March. It's ridiculous. It really, really is. But yeah, excellent result again. Sebastian Allaire walks away with his fourth man of the match this episode. Another 10 rating. And that puts him in prime position for the next game of this episode, which is a massive clash in the Bundesliga. Back at the Signal Iduna Park for an enthralling, or what, what could prove to be an enthralling encounter against SV Werder Bremen. So uh, the third gameplay game of this episode, we'll start with the team as well. Kobar starts in goal, got the back four of Munia, Chan, Schlotterback as the left central defender and the left back is Guerrero. CDM, Oskan, other centre mids are Sommer and Ahud, then Adeyemi, Marlon and Pulisic lead the line for us. So we've got a very, very strong team out, as you'd expect from us. And um, we'll start with the first half of the Signal Iduna Park as it comes to us in the first minute. Um, Sommer plays a ball out wide very early on, quick one-two with him and Guerrero bursting through the midfield is the young player Valentin Sommer. Quick ball outside towards Adeyemi, who cuts inside Felix Agu. Can he score from here? Adeyemi can! Inside the first two minutes and 20 seconds of the game, Kareem the Dream Adiemi gets his fourth goal of the episode. Brilliant, brilliant goal by him. And an assist for Valentin Sommer as we're 1-0 up already. In the 24th minute, Sommer again at the heart of this goal. Dahoud from distance strikes one against the goalkeeper Plogman. What a weird and wonderful name that is, Luca Plogman. But brilliant goal by Mahmoud Dahoud and another assist. For our young midfielder, Valentin Sommer, who's really coming on leaps and bounds. As far as we can see, still 64 rated, but obviously rating is not everything on this game. So very good first half performance as we lead 2-0. But after a short inter intervene at halftime, we'll restart in the second. Six, six minutes. Schmidt looking inside pass. Lucky ricochet towards Holler. And it's a quick pass inside towards Juk. Who I think used to play for us, actually, as a young striker. And he gets a goal back, but it's not deserved. I'm quite frustrated that we've uh, surrendered our clean sheet in such a uh, disappointing manner. Marvin Dush, the former Dortmund youth uh, sorry youth player, former German under 20 international as well, scores a goal for Werder Bremen. But straight from kickoff, we bring Millie Savage on for Valentin Sommer, who's out of puff already, bless him. Very tired, but a quick one too between Marlon and the newly introduced Milinkovic Savage equalises in a goal for us. And we're now 3 1 ahead in this game. I mean, he just come on, bless him, and he scored already. Brilliant goal by Sergei Milinkovic Savic, the number eight for Dortmund. Brilliant goal. He's been such a good signing for around £74 million. And we're now two goals ahead yet again. And just after that, Milinkovic Savic coming forward again. Cuts inside his man Friedel. He's got a chance here. Gets past his man Belly as well. Felix Agu can't keep up. Can Milinkovic Savic do anything from this angle? Cuts inside. Finesse shot from distance. Plogman makes a meal of it, and it's another goal for Sergei Milinkovic Savic. We see the Wan Aldum celebration come out again, but it's a brilliant goal by Big Sergei, our big dominating Serbian superstar midfielder. Brilliant finish, that. So talented. Brilliant run from the halfway line as well. Such a tremendous finish from the angle 
to beat Plogman. Brilliant goal. I keep saying brilliant. I need to stop saying it. I need to get some more vocabulary. But yeah, 4-1 ahead now, and we're not quite done yet. A corner in the 81st leads to another goal, and a hat-trick for Sergei milinkovic Savic, who wins his header against his defender. And he's just come on. He come off in the sorry, come on in the 67th minute, and he scored a hat trick inside 15 minutes. This is like the cup all over again. He's so damn good. He really, really is. Such a talent in real life. Such a talent on this game. An absolute midfield powerhouse all rounder. And he scored the three important goals to give us the 5-2 victory. As Werder Bremen did get a goal in the 90th minute, but I neglected to show because I don't care. I don't think you guys do either. But still, excellent result nonetheless. 13 shots to 5, 4.3 expected goals to 2.9. We get out past, but we get the same possession, so it doesn't really matter. Passing is nothing in this game. It doesn't mean doesn't mean a lick of anything, honestly. But still, fantastic result again. Milinkovic we'll Savic get the 9.3. Only played 23 minutes of the game. And uh, Dahoud gets an 8.3. While Valentin Sommer gets two assists. I'm actually really impressed with his performance that game. He was really, really good. And he gets an 8 rating to add to his uh, repertoire. So, yeah, very, very nice to see a 5-2 victory against Werder Bremen. And we've got one final game to come in the final four minutes. And we've got Real Madrid in the return leg of the UCL round of 16 clash at the Signal Duna Park. We see the Sergei milinkovic savic Tifo in the background as well. Hopefully, we can get a double in this. We'll see the team before we kick off. Kobal starts in goal. We've got the back four of, I think it's actually back five. We've played Mori's the right wing back, as usual, over Thomas Munier. With Sulo Hummels, Akanjin, Guerrero as the rest of the back four. Bellingham and Savage as the midfield two. And then Royce, Pulisic and Haller as the striking trio. So the first half of the game comes the way of Madrid in the 25th minute. Asensio cuts inside his man. Mats Hummels looking to pull it back for a man in the middle. Does really well. Back in towards Benzema. And Kobal misjudges the flight of the ball. It's a little bit of a mistake from our Swiss number one. But, you know, it's still uh, level on aggregate. And Benzema with the important goal. But I think we can still uh, recover this. And just before half time, we nearly do. Haller breaks uh, ground on Alaba. Chance for him to make another goal. It's off the post. And Courtois smothers it. As we're still 1 0 down at the first half interval. But still, not the, not the worst first half in the world. We've got a lot going for us so far. And we will get the next highlight of this half. And it will go to us. So in the 6th-7th minute, Pulisic looking for the inside pass towards Bellingham. Haller's free ton goal already. And he beats Courtois at the angle. It's a brilliant goal from Sebastian Alla in the 69th minute. 69. Hey, brilliant goal by Sebastian Alla. That's all that matters. Never mind the number. That's such an infantile joke. But still, brilliant, brilliant through ball by Bellingham. And the finish by Sebastian Alla could prove crucial in a game like this. And indeed it does. We go through 4-3 on aggregate against this fantastic Real Madrid side. Basically another team of Galacticos to be fair. The Champions League winners last season, of course. They beat Liverpool in the final. But they were no match for us over the two legs. We get the uh, win in Madrid and then the draw in Dortmund. So yeah, excellent result nonetheless. We had nine shots to four. 1.7 expected goals to 1.5. And I think we deserved it on the balance play. I really do. Very, very nice team performance indeed. Man of the match for the game. Actually, was it go to actually? I haven't even seen that. Haller gets a 7.5. Does it go to him? Does it go to Karim Benzema? I'm not actually sure. I think it might go to Haller. Yeah, it should go to Haller then, shouldn't it? Surely. Yeah, Haller gets a 7.5. Brilliant performance by him. As I keep using that word over and over again. And we'll have a look at the table as we finish another episode of the Borussia Dortmund career mode. We're top of the league still, 14 points clear of RB Leipzig, 17 clear of Bayern, and we're in the semi-finals of the DFB Pokal against Union Berlin, with Leipzig and Stuttgart awaiting us, potentially, in the final. So the top scorer at the end of the episode is Sebastian Halle with 25 in 19. The UCL hero, Sebastian Halle, he's so damn good, he really is. Really, really talented player in real life, but on this game, He's just been next level. Reminds me of Mitrovic, to be fair, with his build and body type. Royce is the top assist in the Bundesliga, closely followed by Bellingham. And then the top clean sheets in the league. You guessed it, Gregor Kobal is still there with 11 clean sheets in 26, with only eight games to play. So, yeah, excellent episode, guys. It really was. Very, very nice to see us win the games we need to win. And we've made it through to the Champions League quarterfinals. And you'll see we get when we uh, skip to the next page. So we start off the next episode in the away game against Köln, a home game against Leipzig. Two games will follow then against Manchester City in the Champions League, home and away, 
And in between that, a ho an away game, sorry, against VFB Stuttgart will take place. A home game will then go ahead against Wolfsburg with games against Bayern Munich and Bochum to probably finish off that episode. But we haven't actually got a lot left of the uh, season because we've still got Union Berlin to play in the semi-finals as well. So maybe two episodes left and we're done with this season, which is such a strange sensation. Sorry, sensation. Eight games into the, sorry, eight episodes into the series. But yeah, that's what we're looking at, guys. As you see, Berlin's the final game of the uh, of the season. And um, yeah, I really appreciate watching the Borussia Dortmund career mode episode six. I'll catch you next one, guys. See you soon.